I don't even know if I have pounders. Probably. Alright, hello everyone and welcome. This is our round three. Rest, rest, Radiant rest. Bam. First, can't say whips. CSW doing a great job of getting through the bracket so far. Beating off. Well, not beating off. Why do I keep on saying that? But <laughs> taking out two opponents already. So this is your upper bracket. Radiant the loser bam. of this match will go down to the lower bracket. The winner will go into Dyer's the bam. upper bracket Winner's grand bracket final. final. That's right, up against Hans Reborn. So that should be a damn exciting match. So right now, rest, 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 first banning out Lich, and then Weaver and Timbersaw being the follow-up bans from CSW. Yeah, CSW yeah, not wanting to play to against uh, Weaver or Timbersaw, and uh, rest banning out the Lich. Lich pretty I much see. is a top ban now. Like, uh, people just get rid of it. I don't think it's super strong, but Reserve I definitely think he lands well, and if you get a good ultimate, it can change the game. It's kind of like Mag. Uh, back in the old days when he used to go mid like every game it was one of those ones where he could win his lane Radiant by just spamming and bottle crowing and if you got his ulti off in a main uh, a key team fight you won it's kind of the same thing yeah exactly with the nerfs to bottle crowing how an empty bottle now slows the courier as well as a hundred damage being removed from rp at all levels it kind of really nerfed him down you still see him sometimes uh in competitive Dyer's play big. just because he is a great combo hero rp still goes through bkb and it's still a massive stun if you can land a good one and have follow-up from someone like an alchemist a sven any kind of aoe hero which you can also grant aoe with your own power it's a great way to win a team fight but a lot of teams are kind of straying away from the wombo combo strategies and are going for more kind of roaming combo pairs along with either split push or a bit of stronger team fight yeah and we see rest picking up that crystal maiden and the clockwork can't say whips picking up the marana so uh, boys boys did have that last game and they showed us how you know good arrows can really help you keep in a game but uh yeah uh, hopefully we can see some amazing plays from this marana on can't say whips i'm not actually sure who would play it on this team either i don't think i've seen them pick it before I'm not 100% either. Maybe Kiro does go off lane quite often. I think you know, he did play the mid last game, but uh, I'm not too sure who would pick it up either. I mean, we have seen them swap quite a bit. So that's kind of the good thing. I think that Australian tournaments have over some others is that the players seem to be very pliable Ten in the positions that they play. Uh, and they they change around a lot more. Like, you're always going to see Loader as your hard carry, whereas, you know, sometimes if Hans want to put balls on a main carry, they will. Reserve if not, they time. put him on a mid Pudge or a Timbersaw. And it can be a lot more interesting and fun and kind of harder to read drafts as well. So, um, right now, the Crystal Maiden Clockwork combo is pretty damn strong. You can throw out that Frost, set up an easy hook, or conversely, you've got the cogs up. It's an easy Nova target, as well as being great for warding people off a good Crystal Maiden ultimate. So uh, there's a lot of synergy in those two. Rocket Flare, great for scouting out everything, of course. Clockwork is just such a strong solo hero. Um, great EHP early on, and the cogs let you escape quite often. Um, and you can definitely be the bane of supports, just throwing out... Battery assaults left and right and stunning them up. It's very, very hard to play up against an even decently farmed Clockwork. Yeah, and Clockwork is one of those heroes that can pretty much change the game completely. Uh, he can either be, like, uh, just does nothing or ruins your own team fights by misplaced cogs, or he can be the change and basically win new games by getting pickoffs all over the map, creating havoc in the, um, in the team fights and just winning you uh, the game. So... Ten One of those interesting go. heroes that can really be a huge influence, even though, you know, he's not, like, a main Six. carry or he's not the mid, but he can definitely change the game. And we see the OD ban up by Can't Say Whips, so Reserve not wanting to play against that, which is pretty standard for most teams. I think any mid player likes to play against OD because he is just a pain in the ass to try and outlay. Yeah, he's very, very irritating, requires pretty much constant attention, you know, if not ganks, then just throwing out someone that was maybe in a jungle or a tri-lane support into the lane to harass him down a bit for a while, just to give the person who was in mid a bit of free space, but it's... I don't know, I mean, Five, six. OD is just so annoying, he definitely does... I don't know if he really deserves a ban, I mean, apart from the laning Reserve stage, time. if he does get rolling, he is a great carry, but... He's completely neutered by BKBs. 
uh, and he is still extremely squishy. You often see him building up four stuffs just to have a bit of a pseudo escape. Uh, and with the changes of items not proccing Essence Aura, it makes it a lot harder for his own laning to begin Dyer's with. Bane. So, uh, I guess can't say Whips probably just want to chuck Dyer's an Intel big. hero into that mid lane and they don't want the farm being too affected by it. Yeah, I agree. And now, taking out the Lycan, which is a little bit interesting uh, for SR3, maybe big. thinking can't say Whips, we're going to sort of go uh, all in, push, kind of just own the early mid game strategy but it doesn't really fit that well with their first two picks I, I don't think but i i guess just not wanting to play against it and can't say what's banning out luna which is the uh late game lich ulti all time <laughs> yeah exactly luna just the right Ten click coming out from her late game is insane if you manage to section off two heroes in a team fight or all the creeps seconds. are gone you just hit for incredible damage as it bounces through targets. Of course, it used to only hit a target once and then Reserve stop. Time. Now it can hit it again, so it's it's just insane. It's so strong, and I, I think people really overlooked that change in the patch. Yeah, I think, uh, well, they did change the damage it did, so it does slightly less, but obviously it still does more. It's a 35% reduction instead of 30, but as you said, it is, it is very, very strong, and that's why we're seeing this, you know, upsurgence of Luna just being picked or banned all the time. Uh, her early game isn't the best with their attack animation being kind of poor and uh, obviously her projectile speed being a bit weak but with that aura uh, and aggressive trial lanes or even defensive trial lanes you just make everyone on that lane so much more powerful. Yeah Damn it's, it's plus 14 go. damage for everyone at level 1. It's pretty insane to have. You basically have an extra hero's worth of right click if you have three people there so uh, it definitely can add up Reserve quickly, and time. CSW are going to go for the Sand King, so we might be seeing some great Radiant stun Bale. combos. Rubik with the lift, Sand King, Burrow Strike, and Marana Arrows. Do you think they're going to run as a roaming duo, or do you think they'll be a bit I more reserved and just defensive lane it? I think they could actually run those as a pretty powerful aggressive try lane with Marana, Rubik, Sand King, but we'll have to really see what they want to do. They can roam, as you said, or just go dual lanes. Uh, but as it looks now, you know, Queen of Pain, Ten solid mid, to go. Uh, or could go the solid safe lane again, uh, like they did last Five time. Seconds. But it really depends what they want to do, and Rest 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 being the fantastic team they are, you know, you can't Reserve disregard time. them. They've got the Puck, so Queen of Pain can't really do much against Puck mid. Uh, you just basically dodge the poison every time, and unless you're too trigger happy with it, and Radiant you get caught Bane. by fake outs, you're usually okay. You but uh, Bounty are. Hunter now being banned against Can't Say Whips, which is fair enough. I'd ban that after last game. Yeah, Godot is just such an expert on the hero. He does pick it up quite often. In fact, we've even seen uh, Hans as well as CSW run that Bounty Hunter is more of a farming role uh, in a trial lane back when, you know, it was 6, 7, 8. Uh, but really, he's just used as a roaming roaming kind of annoyance nowadays and with the changes to experience uh, being soaked up by neutrals by everyone in a 1300 range so it was extended and you get it for non-ancient neutrals i'll clarify there uh it makes bounty hunter Ten and even like heroes go. like clinks a lot stronger in that offlane because you can soak Five up experience seconds. if they decide to pull and still get the lane creeps as well if you're decent with positioning and have good Reserve water coverage time. so you know you're not going to get caught out it, add, it just adds that kind of little extra dynamic to the hero. Yeah, it really does. It it just makes him better. I don't think there's any real way to put it other than the fact that it's it's good. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's good. It's good. But uh, we're going to wait for Rest Rest to pick up their last hero now. It does look like they just need to fill in their farmer. Uh, the Crystal Maiden obviously having that mana region, so you can pick... Uh, someone who has problems with mana now because of that. And Crystal Maiden obviously can walk into the jungle and get a little out of that. Uh, great support, good lockdown, good slows. It basically has everything other than movement speed and health. Yeah, if you get I behind, am. she's really easy to kill. I was going to say, I actually tried out the jungle CM earlier today. Uh, in a pub, of course. And I think, yeah, it worked out well. I, I ended up being like the second highest level on the team by the end of the game with some great GPM, but you're just so non-involved in the early aspects of the game unless the like your safe lane is pushing in a bit that it kind of wastes a lot of Crystal Maiden's early potential. So 
while I do think it does definitely have its place, I know we see Risk picking it up all the time for Hans, and we've even seen it seen it sometimes in pro games go. where Crystal Maiden, if she can't really contribute anything to the lane, will just go Frostbite Five creeps seconds. and build a Midas. It's uh, I, I think fit. it's Crystal Maiden still. If you've got something up like the Tranquils, you should just be trying to roam and annoy other heroes if you, if you can. But you know, it's nice to have that little fallback mechanism with Frostbite lasting so long on jungle creeps. Yeah, you really do. I mean, you know, if you get beaten out of your lane, you can always go do something else, which is one of the nice things about the hero. Uh, kind of overlooked by some people as well. But uh, the Viper pick last. Uh, they yeah, could be playing that in the carry well, which I expect them to be. I mean, you've got a puck to go mid. Five you don't really put the Viper there instead. So uh, that's going to be quite a solid lane for them. And there's a lot of kill potential when you put Viper with things like Crystal Maiden and Nyx. Uh, so much lockdown, so much slow, and a lot of damage to come out of that lane. And the last pick, Warlock, for Can't Say Whips. So I think we will be seeing another safe lane, Queen of Pain. Yeah, it's definitely looking that way. I would assume that they would go offensive, try and run a Rubik Sand King, then Queen of Pain in the safe and Warlock in mid. But I don't know, Kire picking up that Marana did play the mid lane last time. So is it going to be a farming Warlock with a Sand King Rubik? That just we'll, sounds silly. We'll just have to find out, but let's introduce the players. On the side of CSW, we do have Godot on the Warlock, Kire on the Marana, Slicks on the Queen of Pain, Tomato on the Sand King, and Tupac on Rubik. And over on Rest, 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 we have Tondas playing that Nyx Assassin, Explosive Fury on the Viper, Lethal is playing the CM, Miggle is on the Puck, and the Evil Twig is on Clockwork. So it does look like the puck will be going mid, and uh, Twig on the offlane as he normally does. Uh, fantastic lone druid player as well. Yeah, he's he's going to need to be very careful. It actually looks like they're going to be dual laning for now. So, warlock the caster looks... duo uh, are laning together. <laughs> yeah, we've got Tondas and Evil Twig. They're so compatible on every level. I bet you they're just like uh, just like the boys from Fnatic. Giving each yeah, other so in sync. In between cards. Thirty seconds to go. Yeah, they're so in sync that they just—they don't even talk in their lane. They just know what's going on all the time. <laughs> and Godot and Tupac sitting in this bottom lane. It looks like it will be a farming warlock. He's gone for Blades of Attack first with some tangos. So looking to get some early phase, uh, and being really aggressive on that lane. Also got chains first, so there's a lot of harass damage you can do. Meanwhile, Kiri and Tomato up in that top lane. Uh, it the looks like on. Slicks might be just going mid on that quap. Goes a Null Talisman salve and gets... Or rather, it goes the Null Talisman and the salve, yep, and gets pulled got the two tangos. This, so, starting off well against this, uh, the Puck, Miguel, who has just gone for five tangos, having one pulled and also the circle in four branches. So, we know Miguel is a really, really great Puck player, so we'll see what he can do up against one of the best teams in Australia. Yeah, and more of one of the best players in Australia being Slicks, known very well for his home play, moving into Dota 2. I think not. Yeah, he just plays a very, very good solo. Godot's going to get caught inside the cogs. I think Twig was actually going for more of a block and mana burn. He also has been linked to those creeps, so taking quite a lot of harass damage already. Uh, Tupac is just going to be pulling these creeps over, but only manages to grab one of them. So, a bit unfortunate there. Creep aggro can be a fickle beast sometimes, so... But right now, uh, you know, he's just going to have that single creep pulled back. Yeah, a little bit unfortunate. And with the patch too, the, the timings change a little because your creeps uh, move a little bit faster and then a little bit slower. So, it's a little bit harder to do, but you get used to it eventually, so maybe not uh, pulling as oh, much as you used coming to. out in Explosive Fury, followed up by the arrow. Kiri hitting the right clicks, but it's just not enough. Explosive Fury having that corrosive skin as well, doing a bit of harass damage. So nothing comes for free against the Viper. Yeah, it's really hard to harass down a Viper because every time you hit him, you take a little bit of damage in the slows. And if you want to play super defensive, you can upgrade that corrosive skin quite a lot. And it's a lot of damage to take. It's a hundred damage every time you hit him at top level. It also so, gives you well. some nice magic resistance too. So it makes the combo that they have a little bit weaker. Yeah, it just makes them a whole lot tanky, you know. 50% magic resistance and all those other parts of the skill, it's just fantastic to have. But uh, Tupac and Tonda's just battling it out down uh, down bottom, trying to get some experience each on this uh, pull. 
But uh, Tonda's being the melee, you know, he's having a bit of a harder time. He's just trying to stay in, stay in range for experience, but he is going to run out and miss out on that. Slicks actually did drop quite low. He's sitting at 7-1 and one right now, denies the Invis rune at top, but has only one more Tango of regen, sitting on an old Talisman, so doesn't have his bottle yet. Meanwhile, Miguel's sitting with the bottle already crowing away, uh, and he's really started to kind of dominate this lane, sitting at 11-3, and three, where Queen of Pain is at 7-1, and one, so Miguel doing a great job of keeping Slicks down right now. Yeah, and I mean, Puck on, on, on paper does win this battle anyway, so having an advantage going into the lane is always really good to have uh, in a 1v1 matchup. And uh, I mean, Twig is struggling a little bit in the spot lane as well, only with four last hits, while uh, Warlock actually the top of the map and picking up phase boots on a Warlock. This, uh, this is unusual to say the least. Yeah, we, we knew it was coming with the early pickup of Blades of Attack. I think it's really so he can maximize his damage and harass. He does have such an excellent right-click kind of animation. It's Warlock's, in my opinion, is one of the best animations in the game. It's got such a quick kind of hit point. It's just really great. And you can see the damage that he's doing to both of these heroes. He's, you know, a ranged hero against Jewel Melee. And he's getting a lot of shots in and doing a lot of damage in the meantime. It's it's basically like being against a witch doctor that can, you know, it it's just so strong. Yeah, and uh, I mean, he will lack the mana regen that you get with mana boots. I mean, something he will need later on in the game when casting all these spells, especially because his ulti, you know. 200 mana for the ult, plus if you want a Fatal Bonds to make it a sh uh, uh, Shadow Ward off, you can't do it. Like, you don't have the mana pool to do all that at the moment he can cast all of them once and that's it so in a team fight he's really just going to be there to drop the rock and that's about it yeah hoping to follow up with a bit more right click damage i guess it's sort of like building into that right click queen of pain where you have the spells but once they're out you still have something left in your arsenal so having the phase is pretty good more than likely he will be going for some more mana regen items going into something like the ags into refresher um, you usually don't see anything else, even on kind of farming Warlocks, it's it's always Ag's Refresher that you're aiming for. Yeah, and they don't have a natural Diffusal Blade Carrier to get rid of the, um, get rid of the Golems as well, We're so gonna see it's going to be out on enough. Lethal in the top lane, the Barrow Strike to follow, but a nice rotation from Tonda's, now Kiri in trouble. Explosive Fury's diving for it, Miguel gets a kill on the Slicks just before the Viper gets the kill, and Tomato gets the kill on Crystal Maiden as well, three kills in... Basically, just as many seconds, Miguel's diving for that, using the ultimate, and just a great pickup. Miguel's really dominating this mid lane, sitting at 23-7 and seven to Queen of Pain 17-2, and two, and picking up a solo kill. Yeah, doing really well in this matchup. Uh, unfortunately, Lethal getting picked off there, but, I mean, trading the uh, Crystal Maiden for that kill up top is, is worth it at this point. You know, killing basically what's their... Uh, their off lane sort of farmer because they do have a warlock farming but you know when you get to a late game against a viper and a puck and you have no actual carry you basically fully rely on the rocks from godot for the team fights and big epicenters and queen of pain ults once they've got things like bkb and if the rocks are not up it can definitely go and rest favor in these fights so you've got to be a little bit careful of that not having you know a natural carry yeah, a big Queen of Pain ult with a rock is, is going to do mass damage. And the fact is, Rest may not have natural Diffusal carriers, and they also don't really have a natural Pipe carrier, so all of that magic damage is really going to hurt. Kire might be in a bit of trouble now. The stun thrown out by Tondas will just miss, but the poison attacks coming through from Viper, will they dive this? Tondas comes forward, but just a little bit too late. So Kire does escape, but now a tri lane in that top lane, and... Miguel's might be in a bit of trouble. Tupac coming in, the ultimate thrown out, and the Fade Bolt is enough to take him down. So, again, a rotation ends up in a kill. So, some nice play from both teams. Yeah, rotating Tupac out of the jungle, and he's got really good experience at the moment, being the only support pulling and everything down bottom. He's sitting almost at level 5 at 6.5 minutes, which Dive is fine for a support. And, and you know, you've got Godot in the lane down bot, sitting at level 7, having absolutely no trouble against Clockwork, but Clockwork, all he really needs from this lane is the experience, which he is getting an enough of. You know, he's sitting at level 5, almost level 6, and once he has Dive that hook, we, should, we will probably see him move around the map a lot more. Yeah, certainly. It's going to come down a lot to these hooks in 
it's just going to be really hard to pick a target because if you hook into a fight and you put the cogs up, you're basically just asking to have a rock dropped on you as well as Queen of Pain screams coming through. Evil Twig's going to need to be really careful and... I mean, do you see him build the pipe? Usually you'll see a clockwork if you need to build something like a mechanism or a pipe, even the BKB, but... Mainly you want him to get something like the Aghanim Scepter into BKB just so he's a little bit more survivable. But I think maybe in this instance he might need to go the pipe for the good of his team. Yeah, picking up a pipe on Viper is is never a, like a bad idea because he has the natural magic resistance. You put a hood on top of that and then the pipe for the team is going to be very helpful. But we could see it picked up on the clockwork as well. Yeah, often uh, Viper picking up mechanism as well we've seen... Uh, pretty often. The old standard used to be Vanguard, but of course it does half block on range heroes, and for EHP, uh, Mechanism is actually better uh, on heroes like Viper and Razor, who are sometimes built with Vanguard. Not necessarily anymore, but it used to be kind of the old standard, so... Um, maybe we see Viper pick up the mech, and the supports have a little bit of free gold to get four stuffs up, or... Something like that, but, you know, the magic damage that will be coming out, we've got a Starfall, a Warlock Golem, we've got the Queen of Pain ulti, the Epicenter, the Fade Bolt, like, there's so much, so... Um, apparently, someone needs 5 to 10 minutes to grab a relative. <laughs> <laughs> Only Oz Dota, right? Alright! <laughs> um... Okay... <laughs> bit weird <laughs> uh, you know rest seem okay with it so not much we can really do we will just uh, kind of wait it out for these five to ten minutes uh, because we will be having a bit of a break I think maybe it's time for another giveaway got to give away that stuff and for anyone in game uh, watching if you want to win some stuff go to twitch TV forward slash spec Dota and I will be giving away some some swag certainly will be. It will be up in two minutes because the stream's delayed. In fact, if you're listening to this, it'll be delayed anyway through Dota TV. So go over right now. Twitch TV forward slash spec Dota. S-P-E-C-D-O-T-A. Um, Hot damn. God damn. Um, so I'm going to do that. See, and this is where normal streams put on music and ditch you. But we don't. No way. We're, we're, we just want to hang out and chill. And have some have some fun for sure one of these days we'll get sick of talking to everyone for so often and we'll just go to music but never today is not that day never ever ever so we're gonna be giving away something let's look oh, we've at got all the items from apple scribbling well i don't have them you have them yeah, I can give them away. Do you actually have them? I can just them? send them to you. You can just send yeah, them, to five give them. them to me. Alright, invite me to trade. Where are you? You're like at the top because you're at. Yeah. There we go. The Spectre has invited you to trade. Thrilling stuff. Thrilling. I like the new like um, anti-scam measures. It's like, are you giving this away as a gift? Yes. <laughs> Oh, you gotta think, I mean, a lot of people wouldn't, so it makes sense, doesn't it? Well, yeah, it's for people that keep on, like, chopping and changing and then, like, removing things from the trade and then adding them in again. Yeah, that's what it is. Alright, so let me, like, write them down so I don't figure Well, they'll out. just go to the end of your um, inventory. They should. When you receive them. Alright, there we go. Everyone on stream can actually see them. Awesome. So you can see all the five. We've got the Pyre, the Blade of Chaos Incarnate, the Skyrath Sentinel, the Style of the Occult Protector, and Heat, the Rare Bow for Clinks. Alrighty, so let's give it away.
Gonna draw it in about 15 seconds. It'll probably be Pyre, seeing as it's first in line. And it's now closed. Time to draw the winner. But, how do you think this tourney is going so far, Dan? It's going pretty well. Like, we made this thing in like an hour. <laughs> and I'd like just woken up, so it was like a whole shock to the system. Like, it was insane. But, uh, yeah, I mean, basically, Gods was in the chat about the SYF thing, and he just said, look, I'll throw in some money and some t-shirts, get some shit sorted, and... I stepped in and we organized it. Godot was a real big help as well, organizing, uh, getting the message out to the teams. Uh, so was David and you for uh, obviously doing the stream and not having an actual life on a Sunday <laughs> to cast with me. Of course, man. I'm always here for you. Damn right. Sending me keyboards and stuff, casting. <laughs> all good. Guy has to actually collect his prize. So I'm getting Empirical Dota to add me. Of course, this is on two-minute delay, so if I'm talking, then, you know, it kind of comes out at the wrong time. It's kind of bad for doing giveaways, but most of it's done by text anyway, so all good. hasn't added me as a friend yet. Man. People are always so lazy with this kind of thing. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get it done quickly. There we go. Finally added. spam by Facebook messages it's gonna be going bloom bloom he wants the wards done I've given away my official statement about the whole thing. <laughs> Why are they asking you for an official statement anyway? Uh oh. People ask me for these things. Apparently, I'm important. Uh, I, don't, I didn't get the memo. Yeah. Alright, one item has been given away. Time to open up the next one. Apparently, I'm getting given more items now, too. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, man. We've had our, our share of issues today. Getting a tournament organized in an hour, nine teams joining up. Server decides to eat its own ass. 
first game was like 14 minutes. Now this game, someone has to go and pick up a relative for 5 to 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag professionalism. Hashtag Ozdota. Yeah. That's alright, we don't mind. Yeah. As we said, it, if it it's... was like a very time constrained tournament, we would, but like, eh. it's only what, 4 o'clock? We got time. Yeah, it's 4, 4 p.m. in Oz, 6 for you in New Zealand. Yeah, but I don't sleep, so. Yeah, exactly. Sleeps for the week. I got work tomorrow, but, you know, still gotta have dinner as well, so hopefully we can get these games done pretty quickly. I think we have. Oh, let's look at the. Uh, the bracket. We've got Hans versus the winner of this match next in the upper bracket. And then a couple of lower bracket games, and then the final. So probably about another four games. Yeah, roughly. I was supposed to cook dinner tonight too. Ha! <laughs> not doing it now. No. So we might be going pretty late tonight, actually. Yeah, it could be. If we're doing the next... I mean, in theory, we could do three games depending on when the losers final is on it all depends on time and when things are on and stuff so and remember the final is the best of three so apparently that facebook noise yeah i know i told you it's going boop boop <laughs> getting facebooked yeah i was it's about the next australian tournament that me and dan are actually going to be doing um which will be the uh esports daily end of year dota 2 cup um, which is sponsored by Audio Technica right now. It'll apparently also be looking for sponsors from Razer, ASRock, and Asus, which uh, may be possible sponsors for more stuff to be given to people in the tournament and possible viewer giveaways. So it is a 1K Australian uh, prize pool with, I think it's 500 to the winner or 400. Yeah, it's... And then it's, it's a decent split. It's all on my Facebook if you want to check it, of course, is forward slash spec doto. It's also on southerncrossdota.com if you want to check out all of the stuff. It'll be on the 30th of November and the 7th of December, um, as well as it's being cast by myself and Dan, uh, which will be pretty fun. And you, the signups are also open, so anyone can join, uh, and there is a 25 buck entry fee. And there won't be any bracket fixing. Yes, that's right. No bracket fixing from Esports Daily. No, we'll make sure. None at all. None at all. God damn, we're getting so much swag right now. Where? It's being given to me. Oh, swag. I thought you said slag. I'm like, who's slagging us off? <laughs> Why would you? I did sleep for 14 hours the other day. <laughs> You are so lazy, man. Uh, also, my official response wasn't the one that Scope gave me. Oh, that's sad. Uh, and apparently, it's the official response isn't being run anymore on <laughs> the place I just gave it to. Apparently, they're not writing about it now. All right, then. Sure. All right. Send you swag. Just wait. It's got I'm so much stuff. I don't want to give it all away. Shit's good shit, man. <laughs> Squeakster. Hot damn. Hot damn. Oh, looks like we're unpausing. Oh, we're unpausing? Jesus. Thanks. Sweet. That well, back in the game. All bit. right, Squeakster, you'll have to wait a little bit because I'm apparently giving, or rather, the game has started again. So we are back on track. Godot doesn't have his uh, self cancelled out by the rocket, so maybe something that Evil Twig could have tried to do. Just cancel off that clarity. It did only have a couple of seconds to run anyway. And it looks like Warlock already has that int stuff, maybe building straight into that Ags. Evil Twig throwing out the hook, has hit on Godot. 
throwing out the golem straight away. It's inside the cogs with him. Evil Twig dropping low so quickly. He will go down. Godot might even escape here. One more right click will do it. But in comes Tomato with a big stun. Godot coming through with that golem. Will he be able to get the burn damage or will it just block Tomato? The stun is cooling down another two seconds, but he just runs away. Lethal throwing out the slow is going to stop that golem. But Godot lives and grabs a kill. So some great play from him does stop the golem though. So lethal might be able to pick up a kill here. Or maybe he's just trying to use it as bait. But some great play by Godot. And that's basically the problem I was mentioning earlier. Where if Clockwork cogs in, he can drop a rock right into it. It's very dangerous. Yeah, and uh, if he didn't have creeps close, would the mini stuns have stopped the rock? Because the animation time's not the shortest. But uh, I think he might just be able to get it off. Yeah, I believe so. I'm not 100% sure on it, but it could cancel it. So maybe that was hoping that was what he was hoping to do. But I mean, now they know the rock's down, but unfortunately the timing's just not there for them to push or do anything. So it doesn't really matter. And going on getting a kill and getting away. He's sitting on a staff of wizardry now, uh, which generally isn't the first thing you pick up if you're going to go for oh, a uh, argument. is narrowly going to miss out on Miguel's Kirai just off the mark there. Going to be taking a lot of harass as well but does get back in time, and it generally isn't the first item you pick up going for Ags. You usually get the point booster first, but Godot just being He's going in, Necro. This, in this bottom lane. <laughs> He's going Necro. He's going Necro Bucks. Jesus, man. Yep. Getting all the minions you possibly can. Dropping the rock, throwing out the Necro units. I mean, it is great if you're going against something like the Nyx, and Evil Twig is going ham on Godot right now. Walks up, just starts throwing out the battery assault. Has the hook available, goes on him now. But now Godot has some creeps and he's healing up a lot with that Shadow Word. Evil Twig taking a lot of harass damage from those creeps. Now it's going the other way. Twig needs to be really careful. He Godot might be able to get the kill on these creeps if he hits them down. We've got Evil Twig dropping so low down at 63 health. Uses the stick charges and manages to stay alive through it. So some great play. Meanwhile, Miguel's getting a kill on uh, Tupac in the mid lane. Slicks throwing out the ulti. Miguel stick charges up. And has enough to orb away as well, but he doesn't actually go back, throws out the silence, Tondas comes through, tries to get the kill, but Miguel's also shadow poisoned up, he needs to get uh, denied here, one more right click Died should do it, he, no, he does have business. enough stick charges and phase shifts as well, I think he just missed it, but still does just live there, so... Some great damage control there by Miguel. The dire best do something about that yeah, nicely down. done not to get picked off there. Warlock now sending out his Necro one, so gonna be very much looking into take towers down. And with that Warlock ulti, you can certainly do that. It's very good at killing towers. It's better for team fights, but one of the things is, you know, uh, the top teams want to take team fights and take towers, and this hero just is perfect for that. Yeah, Warlock a hero that you don't usually see because. Uh, heroes like the Puck will just jump in and silence him straight away in a team fight. So you generally need something like a BKB, and if you're getting a BKB on a Warlock, usually it's much better on a different hero. So CSW just wanting to have a bit of fun here, I'm guessing. Going for a bit of a non-standard pick, and so far it's working out well for them. Yeah, it really is. And I mean, he did very well against this sort of pseudo dual lane. Uh, Tonda's kind of being here sometimes, not being here the other times, because that uh, that fatal bonds just really helped him out in the lane, and uh, there wasn't really much Twig could do against him because of the range and obviously picking up phase boots. And he's got over a hundred damage as a support hero, and as you said before, really good attack animation. Yeah, it's it's pretty insane. It's. As, as I was saying before, it, it's kind of akin to Witch Doctor. We're going to see damage coming out on Explosive Fury. A big arrow is going to hit, but in comes Tondas with a triple stun. Now the ultimate coming out on Kirei doesn't manage to disjoint it. They do manage to take out all three of the ganking heroes. So a great, great get by Rest. Just picking up a three for zero trade and keeping the, well, keeping the carry alive throughout the whole thing. Yeah, fantastic stun coming out of Tondas there, catching all three of them, and then everything else just followed, and even the ulti coming onto the, uh, out of the Viper just to clean it up and make sure it gets down, and now Viper yeah, sitting on the mech. He's done Viper. actually really well on this top lane. So, uh, I mean, he hasn't died. Two kills, two assists. And uh, picking up the mech at this time is really good for them, and they can look to start fighting. It's just the fact that the uh, Chaotic Offering is going to be a little bit dangerous for them. Meanwhile, Warlock does take down that bottom... Uh, tier 1 tower with those Necro 1 units does have enough money for Necro 2 now 
of which he has purchased up straight away. So at basically 13 minutes in by the time the courier flies out, we've got a warlock with necro two units as well as his golem. Guess and he's just about to hit level 11 as well. Tower. So that's going to be a level 2 ultimate and level 2 necro units coming out, you know, sub 15 minutes. And that's really yeah. scary. Not just for team fights, but for towers as well. Yeah, picking up an early necro 3 can definitely change the game. I mean, you take towers so quickly, and it's the uh, highest damaging item per cost in the game. Uh, because those necro units do so much damage. It does more than uh, Monkey King Bar, more than a butterfly. It's just insane. Uh, without anything else factored in, just the pure damage output, it's it's just die, one of the strongest one, items of the game. And I think tower. it is actually the strongest except Divine. And we have the rock dropped on top, hitting out a lot of the trees as well. Lethal should go down very quickly here. One more right click. The burn from the golem is going to be enough. Tonda's dropping very low. A nice hook in from Evil Quick, picking off Kire on the back line. But in come the Necro units, as well as uh, the orb being thrown out by Tupac. A double kill for Tomato, and as you were saying before, you can take the team fights, and then you still have that unit to take the tower. So this is a Necro 2, plus a Warlock, plus his Necro, or plus the, uh, the Golem hitting on the tower. It's an easy kill at the end. Yeah, really nicely done by CSW there, and uh, that's exactly what they need to do. Uh, as I said, and they're doing it well, you know. And, and that's only with a Necro 2. And we saw, you know, the Mana Burn come out on Nyx and one attack from a Necro unit, and he almost died. Like, it's an insane amount of damage output. And Godot's just gonna pressure this top tower with his uh, Golem, and, you know, the waves pushed up, and that was just from a simple team fight. Took the tier 1, pressured tier 2 already. And that's just how fast you can do it. And he'll have Necro 3 up now, uh, which is being flown out to him on the courier. Even though the courier says it's going to puck on my screen, which is uh, weird. Well, that would Without be the other courier, tower. that's why. <laughs> yeah. Then it doesn't choose the one you click on. It's just like, you can have a random one. Everyone, go, go, go. But yeah, go dot with a Necro 3 at 15 minutes into the game. We're going to have Puck going on two Puck in the top lane. Somebody's manages to dodge the orb, but a double damage is too much. Evil Twig goes for a hook in, but just hits a creep. So go dot will stay alive for now. Double damage still on Miguel. No, it has run out. So they still may think of going in on go dot. The rock is down for another minute. He does have the Necro 3 minions, though, and you really have to take those into account. At this stage of the game, it's basically like having another one and a half heroes. He does get jumped on, but an excellent stun in from Tomato. He's throwing out this Sandstorm instead of the ult because those mini stuns were coming through, but in comes Crystal Maiden. Go dot now caught. Doesn't has already popped those Necro 3 units. Explosive Fury gets the last hit. The Nether Toxin all the way up at level 4. Doing a lot of bonus damage. Tomato tries to come back in. Big ultimate coming out from Slicks. Viper Strike getting thrown back at Explosive Fury. It will be his death. And those Necro 3 units just going ham on Lethal. He does go down to a Slick Scream. And a Rocket Flare trying to pick someone off. But Tomato and Slick still too high. A great fight taken by CSW. It's a 1 for 3 trade. But Rest do manage to pick up the Warlock. Who uh, at the moment is actually our lead farmer in the game by quite a margin. So a nice pick up by them. Yeah, doing really well there. That team fight just went completely in CSW's favor. And that was without the rock. They had a good initiation. You know, Evil Twig got in there, but the Sand King's done into the cogs was really dangerous for them. And then the Sandstorm, as you said, to come out so the, uh, so the mini stun didn't stop the epicenter. It just all fell into place really nicely for CSW. And those Necro 3 units, you know, they were chasing supports and they can't kill them. Because if you kill the melee one, it's going to kill you. Yeah, at this level, Lethal has only 815 health, and I believe the Necro unit, when it dies, does 600 pure damage. So that's like uh, 400 pure, I think. It is. Isn't it at level three? It's 600. I'm pretty sure it's 400, but I'll okay. we'll do I'll double check, we'll check when it. he spawns. Yeah, again. when he next yeah. spawns. But it's still a massive amount. If it's not, you know, two thirds, it's still like half of his life points in one hit. It's pretty damn hurtful and. We're going to see a smoke up from Tomato, Slicks, and Kire. They might think it's just Godot and Tupac in this mid lane, but Godot now has the rock at, you know, at his, his leisure. Tomato is just going to miss on a stun. A nice slow thrown out by Lethal, Radiant's but it won't be enough. Godot hits. throwing out the Necro 3 units, and you can just see this T1 tower completely the melting. He hasn't even dropped the ultimate, and it's just going down so Radiant's hard. We're going to see Nyx come in right into the rock. Evil Twig getting off a nice cogs in the back. 
hitting on two heroes, but Rubik throwing out the ultimate on Tond just takes it down instantly. Miguel's with a Dream Coil hitting on Twig, but he goes down. Tomato's throwing out an excellent epicenter. He does go down. Now Evil Twig trying to battle it out up against Quat, but she has to go back. CSW losing three. Rest only two at this point, but Kirei hitting a nice point blank arrow on Evil Twig, and the Starfall is enough to kill him off. A leap will disjoint it, but Slicks caught out by a stun, and Viper just turns around and takes him down. So in the end, a 4 for 3 trade, Rest coming out on top there. Really surprising, and I mean, they did very well in that fight. Twig just separating them off with the cogs, and all the ultis for CSW came out except the Sonic Wave. So you had the epicenter come out, you had the Warlock ult and the Necro units, and they still didn't take that, which is insane. And Rest just played that fantastically. The Puck got in there right on time. He did die pretty quickly, but he got everything off. He got all his spells off in the fight, which uh, did the damage, and they just played that really well. Didn't lose their tier 1, uh, and came ahead in the fight, but... Uh, I think Slicks made a little bit of a mistake jumping in there afterwards, but he thought he could get a pick off, which is fair enough. Yeah, and we do of course have that mechanism up on Viper that did keep the team alive quite a bit. Uh, it is a big advantage when your team has a mech and the others don't. Tondas is going to go into Vendetta in this bottom lane, might look to catch out Slicks. We do have Puck with a haste rune. Slicks does go off into the jungle, killing off the solitary creep that's in that camp. Screams and actually hits Slicks, and Miguel's ulti comes out just a second too late. Gets orbed on, the silence is not going to come out, and Slicks just able to blink away without that ultimate available, not able to get the kill, and just some great reactions there by Slicks. Yeah, and meanwhile in mid lane, you know, they did take the uh, tower, and it is 600 pure damage. Jams, your Ardite. I just saw that thing pop up. I actually thought it was 400, but maybe that's just the level 2 one. That's level 1, I thought, I thought it goes 400, 500, oh. 600. Wow, that's insane. I thought it was 400 max level. <laughs> no, it's, it's just gotten so... even stronger in my mind. <laughs> Necro 3, plus 1 rank. Yep, that's pretty much the best item radiant in the game now. Bottom towers, there I, I like a lot of cheeky things tower. you can do with it as well. I've seen invokers throw out Alacrity on the melee creep. He has like an incredibly low base attack time, um, and it's just great seeing it thrown out. We're going to see a combo up in top lane. The Epicenter even used to take down Evil Twig. Just some great chaining there, and that's given the Sand King is Blink Dagger, so their initiation has become a lot scarier. You can throw down the rock, and Tomato, he did manage to get off the epicenter last fight pretty well, but now it's a guaranteed hit Trouble where he wants to hit it with that blink tower. tower. Yeah, the initiation range has just gone so much up, and you, know, you can use the Warlock ult to basically get the stun off, and then all of a sudden, you've got an epicenter in there straight away. And Godot, he's now building the refresher before Arganims, so he just wants to get the double stun out, stun out which I think is the right decision for this. Uh, just because if you get two stuns out, you've got much more time to get the epicenter in and the sonic wave in. But uh, it's just going to be the fact that it's going to cost all his mana to use two chaotic offerings. That's it. And he'll be able to get out the Necromicon, but he won't be able to use anything else uh, in the fights. And that's kind of generally why you see Warlocks go for the mana boots, because you can throw it out, mana boot, refresh, mana boot again, and have you know a little bit of extra mana there. Um, but, yeah, usually you do see Warlocks going for Ags first, because it does give you quite a lot of mana. Um, it does increase the cost of the ult, doesn't it? No? I don't know. I'm not 100% not on that, but uh, in any case, it usually gives you much more mana than you actually have to spend to use it, and it does give you the two golems. But, as you were saying before, kind of uh, prioritizing the double stun over the double golems. So, you know, you can't really blame him there. And more than likely, he'll be going for Ag Scepter after the Refresher in any case. So, uh, yeah, right now, Godot just playing as he feels he needs to. And I guess with a Refresher, if the Necro units die, you can resummon them as well. So you can't, yeah, exactly. you can't double summon them because they do get replaced, but you can at least... Uh, Throws them out again if one of them dies and they're back at full power. Dies bottom towers. Get yeah, which is going to be really good in these team fights. I mean, what he might do is actually spread out the casting of the warlocks rather than just get the longer stun duration. You have the sort of ability to re-engage or um, use it for the next fight basically straight away. You don't have to blow them both at once, but uh, it'll all depend on how the fights go. But that's definitely going to be a very powerful factor in these fights. And, we're going to have Evil Twig hooking in, Miguel jumping in as well. They're going to instantly take down Warlock before he can do anything. Tomato jumps in, throws out an Epicenter, 
Hits quite a lot on Evil Tweet, but Lethal getting a full duration ulti coming out, stopping it because he wants to chase. Tonda's coming forward in Vendetta. Double Midas coming out. Godot did buy back for that. Going to drop the rock, but cancels it off. The base noise did come out, but nothing going. Tonda's does get uh, hit up here, and the arrow is just going to hit. He's going to be able to take him down, and Godot just spamming out that ulti and cancelling it. It's starting to freak me out. Oh, I'm expecting the rock to be dropped with the doom, yeah, but nothing's doom. happening. <laughs> but, you know, I thought that fight was going to go a lot worse for CSW after Godot just got instantly blown up Radiant's there, but the buyback saves him for the moment, but it does cost him a lot of gold, and now, you know, he's still not getting anything but reliable gold. So... You know, it's Radiant very double-edged. He's not going to have his refresh roll for a long no time now. It does set you back quite a lot. And here comes the big ulti. Tomato coming in. Can't follow it up with an epicenter this time. And we have the ultimate that was stolen by Tupac. The BKB thrown out by Explosive Fury. Already taking down one. The buyback from Nyx as well. He's going to try and come back into this fight. Tomato with the blink stun. He's going to get the uh, kill with the Warlock right click. Miguel managed to take down Queen of Pain. He does have that dagger. But he's taking so much rash from these Necro Warriors. Plus Warlock. Evil Tweak. Eating an arrow. Now Tonda's trying to run for his life. But that Carapace stunning out the heroes. Evil Twig now taking the damage from these minions. Miguel needs to be careful. Tomato coming in. But actually getting the kill on Sand King. Uh, uh, strangely, just after he goes down, so the uh, the damage coming through. Tonda's trying to stun up this warlock, but just doesn't happen, and they're taking a lot of damage. If that flaming fist procs a couple times in a row, they're gone. But the spike carapace will stop the aggression, and right now, rest, rest, rest ahead in kills, but very far down in towers. If we take a look at experience, it was around four and a half k in CSW's favor, down to about two and a half, and the gold graph. However, is around 8 to 9k in CSW's favor. And you kind of have to attribute that to the Hand of Midas's that have been picked up on the Queen of Pain and the Marana. Yeah, they definitely do put you ahead uh, in the Golden Experience graphs. Does look like Queen of Pain's going to be picking up a Hex as well. So Slicks will be getting that very shortly, sitting on 3.2k right now. Uh, and the Ultimate Orb already picked up. So just going to Midas a creep, kill a couple of neutrals, and we'll have that. Miggle actually picking up a Dagon on the uh, Pug. And that's a Dagon too. So I think they're basically just getting this done to burst the Warlock. If you can kill the Warlock before the fights, you could win the fights. Radiant yeah, exactly, and that's that's what they did last time. It forced a buyback from the Warlock, so his next death is going to be a hell of a long respawn, uh, and that may be all that they need. As soon as Clockwork gets a decent hook in, he's stunned out, Puck blinks in silences, and it's basically a guaranteed kill. In fact, Miggle's going to go on Slicks right now and gets the solo kill just so quick with that combo, and Slicks can't react in time. There's just nothing that they can do, and a great pick off by Miguel's there. Yeah, really nicely done, and I mean, Miggle's just showing how much of a good puck player he is, and I think the Dagon pick, you know, a lot of people will look at it and go, why is he getting a Dagon? This isn't a pub stomp, this is a hard game. But, you've got the ability to instantly kill any one of their heroes with puck with all his skills and the Dagon. We're gonna see Puck lifted up. A blink in from Tomato. Miguel's dropping almost instantly. So much damage coming out in a short space of time. And that's the problem with getting Dagon on a Puck. If you don't go in for something like the Lincoln Sphere or the Scythe, which gives you a bit of stats through the Ultimate Orb that you pick up, you're just so easy to burst down. And as soon as Slicks gets up that Hex, if he manages to get a, you know, hit Puck with it, he's gonna pretty much die every single fight almost instantly. So. Uh, do you think we see Puck building into something like the Lincoln Sphere, or does he just keep on building up Dagon? Honestly, I think he would uh, benefit really well from picking up a BKB. I don't think the Lincoln Sphere is going to help him a great deal. I think BKB is going to basically keep him alive during these fights. He will get the uh, initial stun, I do believe, from Chaotic Offering, yeah, but that's right. other than that, he's, he's fine. There's nothing else to stop him. Yeah, I think the only thing that'll happen is Tupac will probably uh, steal the Viper ulti and he'll be able to take him down. Trying to throw CM onto the cliff, does manage to, but now she can just ult away. Does manage to pick up the kill. The Chaotic Offering does get thrown out and Lethal does get hit by it. Also gets arrowed, but they're spending all their time trying to take down the CM. They do manage to kill her, but the rest of the team does manage to run away. Meanwhile, Viper trying to slow down. We're going to see a double stun coming out from Tomato. The Queen of Pain also comes through at the same time as the mech. It looks like it barely did anything. Rocket Flare to come through, and Puck actually killing off Murana with a nice jump in. 
Miguel is just playing insanely, then jumping to the high ground. The amount of kind of flexibility he has with this puck is amazing. As we were saying when the game started, Miguel's is just an insane player, and his puck is probably, for me, the highlight of his roster. Yeah, it really is. And, uh, I mean, they used the rock in that fight, but they didn't get much out of it. All they did was kill a Crystal Maiden, and now the rock's down. He will have his refresher very soon. Uh, he's only 100 gold away, and he's just using the rock to farm this ancient camp. So he has the refresher up. He probably won't want to use it uh, until he can do the double rock rather than refreshing uh, to use it in the next fight. So they're probably just going to avoid fighting until they have that uh, rock up again. And once they have it again, these fights could definitely turn against uh, Rest, Rest, Rest. And it's going to be very hard for them to win these fights unless they burst them down really quickly. And it does look like Clockwork's going to be building up that pipe. Does have the Hood of Defiance already picked up. Uh, so more than likely we'll be seeing him pick up that headdress and complete it into the pipe. Just for a, a bit of uh, kind of assurance against the massive magic burst that comes out from this team. And I think CSW kind of have to be a bit worried about that. We already have a BKB out on the Viper that's kept him alive in these last couple of fights and done really well. And it's... Uh, it's going to become more of an issue the later the game goes, uh, unless Marana manages to get up a lot more farm, or Queen of Pain goes into more of that right-click carry build. Yeah, I mean, she can go into the right-click. She does a decent amount of damage sitting on 135. With uh, not the worst base attack time at 0 0.75, but obviously she will need to build damage. Uh, picking up something like an MKB definitely does boost her damage a lot. Uh, but it all depends if she can. Yeah, I, I mean, rest, if they can kill the Warlock, they can win a fight. We're going to see a five-man smoke here, so we might be seeing a big initiation on the bottom lane. Yes, We're going to see a hook-in from yeah, Evil to Akira is the target. Just leaps out, though. Probably not the best target to try and go for. Arrow comes through. The BKB yeah, thrown out by uh, by the Viper. He's going down, trying to kill him off. Godot throws out the Refresher as his ultimate wasn't available. Just the single rock this time, but he will go down here in just a few more hits. Slick's throwing out a very nice ultimate, hitting on basically everyone, but in comes Tomato with the big ulti. Misses Lethal with the stun, but does manage to get a double kill with the epicenter. It's a buyback again from the Nyx Assassin, but it was a two for four trade. So CSW getting the better end of that stick. Yeah, definitely winning that fight. And it was a nice rock. I don't think they realized that he had the refresher yet. And... They, they went in to kill the Miranda, obviously they couldn't grab it because of the leap, and then it all just went bad. That CM ulti almost killed two of them, but she died just before it uh, did the lethal damage and got them off. And She's going to be building up the BKB now, just so the ulti can come out, and it does a lot of damage. Yeah, it's 170 damage a second for 7 seconds. You just have to stay alive and not get stunned, which is the hard part, but... Now they know the refresher is up, they'll be more hesitant to take the fights. We are going to see Warlock picking up a BKB now as well, so he can't be burst down. And once that up, once that's up, I, I, I fear for Rest's capability to actually take another fight. And another big pickup uh, that you may have missed is Tupac the Rubik, actually building up into an Aghanim Scepter, getting it by the 30 minute mark. So if he steals off Viper's ultimate, which is of course very easy to do, he gets the Aghanim's upgrade, which means he can throw it out. What is it, every 10 seconds? 12 seconds, I think? Yeah, I believe it's 12 seconds. And in any case, it's an extremely short duration, and that's an ultimate that goes through BKB doing an 80% slow. Meanwhile, on bottom, a nice arrow is going to catch up Tondas. Tomato getting the final shot on that kill, and just a great blink stun initiation, and a good follow up arrow. And yeah, a fantastic arrow to pick off that kill on Sand King. Sand King's pretty rich. This is a rich Sand King with a four staff blink dagger. Yeah, I was going to say, he has all the mobility in the world to get off a great stun epi combo. He can really spread that damage over a large area in a team fight. Um, and he does also have around 1.8k gold up his sleeve, so uh, I think we'll probably see him build something like a Veil next. Uh, just because it does increase their magic damage so much, and their team is really built around magic damage at this point. So even if they yeah, do have the BKBs, not everyone has one. Like, that's the problem. BKBs are great for keeping up your cores, but, you know, the Crystal Maiden, the Puck, the uh, the Clockwork, they all don't have anything, and Nyx Assassin doesn't either. He's a long way from anything. He's bought back twice um, and died five times with zero kills to his name. So 
it's very dangerous and we're gonna see Moonlight Shadow thrown out. They might look to initiate on this mid lane. Evil Twig throwing out the cogs and running back so I believe they did spot it out. They do have a ward in this area and I think it may have spotted someone walking past as they went under. And Slicks has now finished off his BKB so the team fight of CSW getting scarier by the second. If we look at the experience graph it's around 9k in their favor. If we look at the gold it's 14,000 the way of CSW. So definitely going in their favor at this point of the game. Slicks has a double damage and they're attempting to go for Roshan, but in come the rest team. Tomato almost being burst down instantly, but the rock gets thrown out. The refresher as well. It's a double rock getting off those two stuns. Tonda's about to drop. Lethal threw out the ultimate, but it got canceled almost immediately. Explosive Fury trying to do as much as he can. Godot will go down here, or will he escape? Evil Twig trying his best, but they just can't take him down. Lethal walking back in, but into a death. It's a full team wipe for just the Sand King, and a triple kill for Kyrie. This is going to be the Aegis, and I think they can pressure high ground off the back of this. Yeah, and that, that fight's basically put CSW in a match-winning position. That refresher ulti is just so strong, and I don't really think they can have Tondas on this Nyx Assassin go first, because they've had sentry wards or some sort of detection everywhere they go, and, you know, we saw him poke out of dust, uh, out of smoke, sorry, so he used his invis, but there was a sentry sitting on that high ground, and nothing went right for them, and this, gonna, this is going to be a Rax very quickly, uh, unless Rex can respawn and try and defend this, but... With these two golems running out, they might not be able to get the racks, but they're gonna, definitely going to get this uh, tier 3 tower down and maybe back off and play it safe or just go straight for the racks. And it does look like they're just going to try and racks it, but only two heroes being here, they're probably not going to be able to do it. Yeah, I think this is something that teams really need to recognize is if they can't push in time, it's actually better to take down the ranged barracks now. It no longer has any regen, whereas the melee barracks has 5 a second, so... Uh, it's actually better to attack that range barracks and do a bit more damage there, unless you can do a large chunk and it's not going to regen in time for your next push. So, a little bit of change in the mechanics in 6.79, so if you think you're not going to be able to push the whole way in, it might be better for you to just change targets. Yeah, exactly. It'd never overextend when you're at an advantage. There's no need to. If you're winning a game, don't give the opportunity to the opposition to take it back. That's basically where it stands. If you're behind and you're in that position, maybe you go for the racks because you're desperate, but other than that, you don't. You play it safe. Yes, indeed. And Sand King now building into an Ogre Club. Do you think this is going to be a BKB? I, I would assume it would be so he can get off uh, his ultimate, but could also be going into something like the Ag. I honestly think that BKB is the safer and smarter choice here. Yeah, I, I think it would be. Kire just coming down here, using the Starfall to hit back these creeps. It, it's a great counter push measure when there aren't kind of any heroes pressuring the tower. We're going to see Godot blink forward? No, it was actually just the blink of Miguel's, and the arrow runs out just before it hits him. That's unfortunate, but Kire had the right idea. It was right on target, but the arrow just not long enough range. And right now, Slicks has built up a secondary Mystic Staff, so it looks like he might be going into something like the Shiva's Guard. Yeah, it does look like that. That's pretty much the only thing he can really get at this point. You know, he's already got the, uh, the Hex. So, what else? I mean, that's the only thing he can get, unless he's just getting the casual Mystic Staff, <laughs> which would be a, a new thing, but he does pick up the Shivas, so... He is going to be getting that. And that's, that's, again, more damage, more burst damage. It's also a lot of attack and move slow that can be thrown out in a fight. Against all of these non-BKB targets, it, it makes it a lot harder for them to chase people down in the fights. And it makes it a lot harder to run against all of these golems and necro units. With Marana also picking up a Daedalus, her damage has just gone through the roof. Yeah, she, she does a lot of physical damage and... You know, not being known for one of those carries that does a hell of a lot of physical damage late game, but pick up Daedalus and Manta, you can definitely dish it out, and with these Necro books especially. We're gonna have a blink in instantly, the BKB's tossed out, and in come the Golems, hitting so hard, Evil Twig will go down here. Godot and Slicks, they're basically untouched because of those BKBs. Now Kyrie coming forward, just missing out on the last hit on <laughs> on uh, the Viper, but does pick up the kill on Lethal. It's a triple kill for Kyrie, and the good game is called by Rest, 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 who will drop down to our lower bracket. CSW 
continuing their impressive performance Radiant in this Star tournament Tower will advance to the upper bracket finals against Hans Reborn. Yeah, fantastically played by CSW. Race certainly showed that they are a contender in these sort of matches. And I mean, I think the reason they lost is Godot's Warlock. Uh, that Warlock play it was just so good. Picking up the Necro so quickly and then going straight for the refresher for the extra stuns through BKBs uh, was really well done. And congratulations to CSW for getting into the winner's bracket final.